Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, we have quite a few interesting articles uh, today, Jeff, but we're going to start it off at first with a school in West Texas. About 1 in 15 students at Crane High School in West Texas tested positive for chlamydia. School officials sent letters home to junior high and high school students to let them know about the 20 cases that they found in the high school's 300 student population. And oddly enough, Jeff, that school also boasts an abstinence only program that officials say appear to not be working. Well, it seems like they could insert some character education uh, in there to fill those gaps, and I'm sure they see some better results. Absolutely. Well, if you remember, we brought you a report on sev several Ebola cases from last year. Now, one of those was a doctor who contracted the disease in September and was given the all clear after being treated at Emory University. But now he's back in the hospital with Ebola teeming inside his eye. Now, in fact, the doctor's two blue eyes have since changed to blue and green the infected eye turning green. Now the doctor said, it felt almost personal that uh, the virus could be in my eye without me knowing it. Wow. The New England Journal of Medicine reported on his condition saying in November of 2014, he had 20-20 vision in his left eye. Within five days of his symptoms, his vision had deteriorated to 20-60 vision in his left eye. Other than eye trouble, uh, he has reported symptoms of fatigue, joint and muscle pain, and deteriorating hearing. Um, other survivors of West Africa are reporting the same symptoms, including complete hearing loss and loss of vision as well. Hmm. So it looks like something that is obviously staying in the body for quite some time. Well, Zach Modell is thankful to have his life as a trip to the Gulf turned into a nightmare. Now, he had a little cut on his foot when he was at the beach, and he said, water just splashed over my foot, and I didn't think anything about it. Well, he later noticed, he later noticed that his foot was a little irritated and had a red spot. Now, 12 hours later, the pain was so intense, he checked himself into the hospital. Hmm. He continued, by the time I got from downstairs to the operating room, there were giant blood blisters on my foot. After seven surgeries uh, and, of course, an amputation of his uh, leg, uh, Zach, an avid carpenter and motorcyclist, had to find a new profession and hobby. He never thought just a few steps in the Gulf would change his life. Well, the state of Texas is the latest place to suffer from the damaging weather as a system brought damaging hail and over a dozen tornadoes. A baseball-sized hail and hail in such abundance that it accumulated on the roadways, making it look like it had snowed. Now, the National Weather Service reported that at least 19 tornadoes were reported, with much of the destruction occurring at night, so it wasn't noticed until daylight um, that the, the, the amount and the severity of the destruction to the homes and other structures was revealed then, and they also had some of flash flooding right. went along with the storms in some areas. It's been extremely difficult to know about at night, especially with power outages and everything That's taking right. place. And so far, uh, there were no injuries uh, to report, but the storms did uh, leave over 11,000 people without power. Well, Texas wasn't the only place to experience rough weather. Areas in Oklahoma had tornadoes that ripped a path of destruction in a once quiet community, destroying mobile home parks and killing one person. Hmm. As we continue with disastrous weather, a little town of Venus, Venus, Texas, experienced a 4.0 magnitude earthquake. Residents say the experience was scary as the earth moved under their feet and things shook inside of buildings and on shelves. One resident of Venus, Bill Searcy, says he believes 
it's all because of the fracking that's taking place in the area. Now, the chair of geological services, Brian Stump, issued a warning saying, we all need to think about the possibility of larger earthquakes in the region. Residents say companies are continuing to frack, so what can we do? They, referring to the earthquakes, are just going to keep coming. Yeah, sounds like that's a warning because it's not going to be letting up anytime soon. Well, SMU researchers say that fracking is the cause of a recent earthquake also that took place uh, in Tarrant County city of Azle. And of course, that's around the Dallas area in Texas. So basically, we're seeing an increase of these number of earthquakes taking place in areas where they hadn't experienced anything like that's this right. before. Well, looking again to the ongoing drought in California, Lake Mead appears to be nearing a breaking point as the snowpack in the Colorado mountains are at a very low. Now, the 50 million or so acre feet of storage capacity that's typical between Lake Mead and Powell when they're at full capacity is rapidly diminishing and the state of Nevada says it can't do anything to help. Now today those reservoirs are a quarter capacity and experts say that it's a pretty scary situation. Oh yeah, considering how much we depend on water, we need it for survival, for food, for agriculture and everything. And currently Lake Mead is down 140 feet below normal. Uh, the impact of climate change is going to play itself out in the water arena, some say. And Jeff experts and activists and climate change advocates are saying that uh, to simply uh, ignore this and turn our heads and say that client ch climate change isn't going to affect us, they say that's just insanity. Hmm. Well, speaking of insanity, the insanity of war has taken an interesting turn this week after a U.S.-led coalition publicly announced its intentions to train and arm Syrian rebels. Now, YPN's Larry McGee has our story on the announcement that many suspect has been the truth all along. Larry, what is the government saying with respect to their uh, intentions in this situation? According to Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter, the recent move to train Syrian seditionists, which is actually a part of a $500 million plan hatched by the Pentagon last fall, is allegedly being implemented as a part of a critical and complex strategy to combat the rising threat of ISIS. The chessboard of the Middle East is increasingly becoming a confused, entangled web of such strategies. Since the Vatican's move against Syria some four years ago, humanitarian groups report 200,000 lives have been consumed in the uproar, with 4 million having been scattered to various regions. To intensify things yet further, Saudi Arabia, led of course by the family of Saud, has teamed up with Turkey and pledged to funnel petrol funds and logistical support to the insurgents of the Syrian revolt, which many may recall was spoken of years earlier as a planned event by the late Catholic historian and writer Malachi Martin. The ancient nation of Turkey, recipient of a personal papal visit in the latter part of 2014, is also in cahoots with the chief of the nations to both train and arm Syrian insurrectionists. The Turkish foreign ministry spokesman says negotiations between the two nations have been concluded and efforts could start as soon as this coming month. It is the American intention to train approximately 5,000 insurrectionists over a three-year time period, and both Qatar and Saudi Arabia have publicly offered to host training sites. In Syria itself, video is now circulating of Syrian citizens in anguish and torment following what is reported to have been a chemical weapons attack. Syrian hospital staff report that at around 8.45, there was the unmistakable noise of helicopters. Staff reports that they didn't hear an explosion, but right afterwards, they started receiving cases. The victim's symptoms included eye and nose irritation, as well as breathlessness, and the suspicion is that the agent responsible was more than likely chlorine gas. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan Jeff, back to you. Now, it does seem like the United States is uh, branching out and has their fingers in a little bit of every area throughout the world. Absolutely. Well, the U.S. 173rd Airborne Brigade has returned to Ukraine. 
The elite U.S. military unit was in the country back in September when they trained Ukrainian forces during some international drills. The goals of the 173rd are to instruct Ukrainian forces by both sharing experience in medical aid and combat skills. Well, Kiev Army officials are stressing the U.S. Brigade is here strictly for training purposes. It is noteworthy to mention the elite group is the United States' key strategic response force for Europe. Over the course of the last year, they have trained units in Poland, Baltics, and Hungary as well. Historically speaking, the 173rd Airborne Division was formed during World War II and is best known for its mission in Vietnam in 1965. They have also fought in the more recent wars of Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, Russia's foreign ministry cri criticized the deployment of American paratroopers in Ukraine, saying it contradicts the Minsk Agreement, which outlines the peace process for the country. Tony Robinson, an international affairs journalist, says the U.S. military is trying to stir up trouble there. Hmm. Well, Yemeni medical workers held a rally to urge a lift of the blockade imposed by Saudi Arabia so medical supplies as well as other necessities could be brought in. The rally was held in front of the United States, United, excuse me, Nations office in the capital of Sana'a, and one worker explained their plight. He said, we have come here to the U.N. office to call on the U.N. Secretary General to put an end to this genocide war against Yemenis. Many patients die at the hospital because of fuel shortage that has stopped kidney dialysis, emergency rooms, and stopped the supply of basic medicines. Yemen's National Commission for Documentation of Saudi Arabia's Atrocities has revealed new details about the violence against civilians committed by Saudi Arabia in cities like Sado and Aden, calling them war crimes. In a recent press conference, the commission called on the international community to put an end to the indiscriminate air bombardment, bombardment including the use of banned weapons like cluster bombs. Well, Yemen's army officials also warned Saudi Arabia against further intervention into its affairs and attempts to cause division. Yemen is experiencing growing anger towards the Saudi monarchy following what the people there describe as an unlawful war, one that has resulted in the deaths of almost 3,000 civilians, including women and children. Riyadh has been accused of war crimes uh, uh, by political observers as well, pointing out that they are conducting unlawful airstrikes against civilians. And as, we, uh, and as was earlier rather mentioned, the ongoing aerial and sea blockades has made life in Yemen for the people there unbearable and has resulted in the deaths of dozens of patients at the hospitals. Well, Human Rights Watch published a report on their website showing credible evidence that the Saudi-led coalition has used cluster bombs during its airstrikes on Yemen. These cluster bombs were banned from use by an international treaty in 2008 due to them being particularly dangerous to civilians. The organization commented on the weapon saying a cluster munition attack disperses small bombs or submunitions over a large area. And if there are civilians in that area, they will likely get killed and injured. Now, they often fail to explode, so they become basically landmines that pose also a threat to civilians should they come across them. Wow. Well, some reports indicate three to four dozen civilians being killed by these bombs, but not one Houthi rebel. It is still unclear uh, or uncertain why such weapons are even being used. Now, in a recent attack, Saudi forces led a bombing campaign over Sana'a, Yemen's capital. One of the targets was Sana'a's only airport. One passenger jet, jet sitting on the runway was hit. While no one was on the plane at the time, it was, however, destroyed. The attack was an effort to stop an Iranian jet from landing. Tehran reported the plane was carrying medical supplies, but was forced to turn back from the Yemeni capital. Further north in the province of uh, Sado, uh, Sado, more airstrikes were conducted on several villages. Now, this is the ninth time the Sado province has been attacked by Saudi fighter jets. Local Yemeni sources have reported the warplanes have completely destroyed the communication infrastructure in the province. 
Riyadh has also carried out airstrikes against regions in Jav province, which neighbors said, oh, there have been over 2,300 airstrikes since March, of t March 26, causing the deaths of over 3,000 civilians, as we, as we mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's very sad. Well, continuing on with those airstrikes, why don't you take a look at this video that we're going to show you. And, and this is what some believe to be a tactical nuclear airstrike or tactical nuclear airstrikes in that area of Yemen. Take a look at this. Wow. Well, as you can see there, Catan having the little mushroom cloud and everything. All right. Yemeni officials are now saying there have been at least 20 Saudi-led coalition troops seen on the ground and more on their way. The officials say a reconnaissance force landed in the embattled port city of Aden. However, Saudi Arabia is denying any kind of ground operation, saying the troops are in fact locals. Well, 150,000 Saudi troops have been mobilized along the Yemen border. Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Libya, Syria, and now Yemen have all seen and experienced the devastating effects of war, and this is just to name a few. No one is left untouched when nations choose to fight it out instead of work it out. Well, Yisrael Hawkins of the House of Yahweh has said war only produces more war, vengeance and retaliation, death and destruction. With the increase in knowledge for this last generation, mankind can actually wipe out all life and make the earth uninhabitable. Well, just as the nuclear destruction is prophesied, so is one place of protection. Order your Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter today and find out where that place is. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494 or visit them on any of their websites, www.yahweh.com, www.yishrohawkins.com, or www.yahwehsbranch.com. You can email them at info at yahweh.com and for any calls outside the united states please call the number on your screen well don't go anywhere up next another exciting message from yeshua hawkins from all of us here at ypn news i'm jeffrey heimerman and i'm katana alexander thanks for watching